Okay, so I got a little bit left in my my battery and I record. But I will record to at least another at least one more part. This last part here. For sure here. And I'll put you know between the no and like I said, most likely it's gonna be the Patriot cores and the two Patriot cores in the America East semi. And then we got the NEC front NEC the second America East semi. And the four north east quarters, but maybe some, maybe the other Patriot games will be at quarter bit. Uh, you know, what it? That's a great play designed on the sideline, and that might be the play that sends me to the championship. Well, they're gonna get a free throw as well. They're up right now by six. Adriana Smith could put them up by seven with his shot. Look, they had some dejected players right now at Binghamton bench, but Binghamton still got a shot at this. This is 53 seconds to go. She gets this shot. It's basically a nope, two possession game. And a quick timeout. Bowman with a great box out to get the space. Still a two possession game. It is an uphill battle now for Binghamton, who thought they had this game in hand. They thought it was in their back pocket, and a trip to either U Albany or Vermont was coming up on Friday. Well, again, if Adriana Smith had made that particular free throw, I think the coaching staff would have felt a little bit better with a three possession game. Binghamton's got such quickness on their team, though, and they've been sticking some unbelievable threes, so Binghamton still has a chance. It's been interesting, though. Binghamton has tried to work the ball inside more frequently, though they are an incredible three point shooting team. They were the second best team in three point shooting percentage in the conference, hitting 33.4% of their shots. And you imagine. So they don't need the three-pointers here enough time, but I would not be shocked to see them go that route. It's interesting in that huddle, Coach Bashon was giving Courtney England, one of her assistants, the opportunity to make the call in the huddle, which I believe Courtney was the one who might have diagrammed that play out of bounds, too. And she's been doing that all season long and dating back into last season. Coach Bashon trusts the associate head coach. Caroline Boardman here has to be sure she doesn't touch that ball. One time out of peace, an electric atmosphere, which will now marvel at this play here. And a foul oh, in. Oh my goodness, that was kind of a long distance call there. And we'll see if that one's gonna be on Smith. Yeah, it will be her fourth. I would have thought that would have been on Simon instead, but now Adriana's going to be very, very careful. Yeah, they're questioning that right now. Well, one's 33 and one's three, so. Adriana's still with her hands up, just to verify and check. She's going to stay with Adriana. Yeah, they're going to have, if Phantom was smart, they'd get the ball into oh, yeah. uh, Colbert. Stick it to Welts. Knocked out of play, last touch on Welts by way of Simon. And Jaden said, no, 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 no. Check that immediately. She started motioning immediately saying, you gotta review that. Now, I don't know who called that timeout, but whoever did, if it's Maine's timeout, that's their last one. No, they were reviewing this one. And to be honest, unless it's off the fingertips of Jaden Welts, I think she's got a good case. Hard to tell from that vantage point. It's almost like you wish you had the reverse angle. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of room over there. Tough one to tell there, too. Her right hand might have been on the ball. We were blocked out of that. The call on the floor, though, is main basketball. So now they have to have irrefutable proof that it has to go Binghamton's way to reverse the call. And, uh, Jack is already right over in the middle of all of that. Jack reviewing. He's like almost a fifth official over there. Four suit up, of course. You always want to have the alternate ready. And then Jack Webb's over there. Businessman in Orno trying to help out Nate and assist. What a, what a great addition Jack has been to our crew here in these games. Last time we'll have Jack for basketball. Last time for us here as well, too, no matter the outcome. But you can get Jack one more time on Saturday. America East quarterfinal matchup, Maine versus somebody. We're not sure who yet. Likely New Hampshire, but it'll be with Jeff Mannix and Mike Toole on Saturday evening from the Alphonse Arena. 
I guess we have a tendency to forget that hockey's still going on. Yeah. <laughs> These games have been so exciting with basketball. This, however, unfortunately is our last game. Yeah. Also, while we have a, a quick second, too, I, I did want to give a little uh, condolences, too, to the Bangor Orono community. Reed Durost uh, recently passed away this weekend to a PA voice of Hudson University Athletics and the University of Maine. So uh, our condolences to the family and friends as well, too. So they adjusted the clock to 50.3 seconds, and don't think they switched the call. So the call on the floor stands. Maine needs to take care of the basketball right now for sure. Six-point game, and Maine needs to inbound the ball and get it over the half-court stripe. And then in addition, try to eat as much time on the clock and have a good outcome when that clock does expire. Yeah, and take care of the ball, because if Banton will probably try to foul to stop the clock, and then Bain's going to go to the line and make free throws. And I'm very, I'm, you know, I'm, just as I was very impressed with the UMass Lowell team, I'm very, very impressed with this Binghamton team. I knew they were going to give Maine a battle just because they've gotten better as the season has progressed. They beat Bryant at their place, at Bryant's place. So, again, this has been a battle. Maine, Bryant, uh, Binghamton, excuse me, has done very, very well against these Black Bears. The Maine Black Bears have done so well coming back after being down by 10 points. And, of course, Ann Simon playing in one of either, if not her last game, one of her last games, depending on how far Maine goes. Danae Bowman, this could be the last one for her. But outside of that, all the other starters will be back, at least on paper right now, for Binghamton. So this is a team that could be dangerous next year. Well, Danae Bowman, though, has been a superstar in this conference. Uh, she was on the American East Honor Roll as a freshman, a good student, all-defensive team her sophomore year as well. Ian Simon, five all-conference selections, first player ever to do that. Offensive foul called on Ann Simon. That'll be her first, I believe, actually. Um, I think that was Ann Smith. She said an eagle, uh, Adriana Smith set an illegal screen. Oh, goodness. So it was, and Smith fouls out. But not before she tries to rile up the crowd a little bit more before this one. Maine, by the way, called their last time out after the review. Ian Simon and uh, Jaden Welch was having a little conversation there, but a friendly one. It was nice to see, a nice friendly one. One on one here. Welch crosses the half court strike. Screen from Coleman. Now picked up by Borman as Welch. Shot clock is off. Two possession game still. Big oh, to take it way too much time. This match in there with Ian Simon. Oh, and Welch, the dagger to get it within three again. She is a bad woman, Sandy. And and not in any way, shape, or form in a bad connotation. More of that she's cool blood. Well, she's got defense right in her face with probably a good foot beyond the three-point line with defense twice in a row right in her face. Five three-pointers in from Jaden Wells, and she's just a... And let, uh, we'll go back to Big Man Tap Main, but let's go to the cool key. that point plateau. Not often you have teammates do that in the same game. Not at all, Jeff. Indeed. No good. three, no good. Then get back. And the number two C looking to play in the semifinals. Oh, Smith with the bank. With a bank shot three. And that will preserve what seems to be the inevitable. Making it a five-point game with 14.1 seconds left. Yeah, they fixed it. They, they originally put a two on the scoreboard, but it was a three, so it's a four-point ball game, 65-61. One of the keys, if the Raiders do win, you need to make your free throws. Let's go back to mean but mean but nerds. Then one tenth of a second. So if I'm in Simon, I just hold it. That's exactly what she does. Maine could take a backcourt violation and have one tenth of a second. That's not enough time to catch and shoot. Yeah. So it's shoot. Not, that's tough to call though when you've only got that much time on the clock and you and you're, you don't have any. Well, neither team has any more time. I also have to get that information from the coach. Exactly. But if I was in town, I would just hold it. She did try to move it up, but smart enough to hold up. 
you free throws, go make it. But there's an alliance here because this is the young lady who wants to get this championship. She made the determination to come back for this very reason, to make it back to the championship game and to finally win it during her tenure. And probably wanting to be that person that's on the line. And this is the second. Still, a two position game. It's a steal once again by Caroline Borgman. And that is it. The Maine Rebut Bears are hosting the America East Championship game at 5 Eastern, Friday uh, the 15th on ESPNU and ESPN+. Plus. What a game. The Maine Black Bears. That was it. Could have done the three and the foul. But that is going to be it. And that is officially two possessions. No timeouts. And that is it. Main Black Bears are going to the America's Championship to either host Vermont or the three seed or Albany the two. And we got a couple of Peach League quarters now. Back to that tight ones. Kogi, the two seed, 67 61 or Navy. Army at Boston U, 62 all. So we'll see, you know. Maybe, maybe Kogi can do a quick watch scouting. Or whoever wins can do a quick scouting of boss of army boss and you if it goes to Orton. Steps back mid range. Two short and another jump ball. Erickson and Hardy battling to the ground. And now the possession arrow will be with BU. No shot clock. So barring any unforced errors. And there's gonna be a timeout. Butts in you. Let's go back to Cody. Board will be another home game Thursday against either Boston or American. Alexa Brody. Why not, Jeff? Gets the steal and now she's heading. That is going to be most likely yeah. Colgate is up two possessions. They are going to try to make it three, but there could be two positions, two three-pointers, and two and one mix. Foul on the shot, but, or otherwise, it's going to be a three-position game. And it is go the first. The first is going to, and that looks like it's going to be a, maybe is not going to be able to win the beach court. Now they have one time up. So they have to, you know, use it now. And they have to shoot a desperation quick three. And do they? Yes! It is a good 3.2. Five point game. And they're just going to hold it. And not foul. And Navy falls. 69 to 64. Kobe is hosting a Patriot League semi either against Ernie or Boston University. Let's go to Ermi at Mayor Boston. Five seconds. And the layup. It's good! Ermi with one point. Now Ermi with 1.5 to go. Has to make any basket. Yes, that's right. Any basket wins. But Boston U has three fouls to give. So does Boston U foul? Oh, they can foul and be very aggressive. And, it, and man, as well. So, Austin, you've got this one locked up. Unless they don't foul. You got locked up. And let's take a look here at the peak. At the. Northeast quarters. We have 38 27, Sacred St. Francis, Limon, Ling, Stone, 56, 44 33, fairly leading Long Island, and 42 23, Merrimack, leading Central Connecticut, 
Rice leading North Texas 25-24, 25-18. Vermont leading the Albany and 26-24. Lehigh leading Loyola. So we'll have to go. We'll go to the Northeast quarters after the after this one. Is over between Army at Boston U 64-62. I said it was end of fourth, but it is not officially end of fourth. One point five minutes. That Holy Cross game fighting back from 21 down. These games have really tested their mettle, and Caitlin Weimer stepping up time and time again to deliver for this Terrier team. One stop separated BU from the semifinals. One bucket separating the Black Knights from either overtime or the semifinals themselves. Like just a little bit of time put back on the clock. 1.6. BU in need of a huge stop. No threes and do not foul a three-point shooter. Last thing you want to do is get in the three-point shooter's airspace and foul. Cannot let that happen. A big pass. Kyle Smith puts one up for the mid-range. No good. And no good. Boston U moves on the Amer the Patriot League semifinals with a 64-62 win over Army.